you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> now, first we welcome back Kat and Gemma. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the Pointless final and this is your last chance. Remind us what happened. Well, we managed to get to the head-to-head, -head, but unfortunately, uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was our undoing. So. Oh, we are statues. <laughs> <laughs> a new song from Chitty Chitty Bang. If only. Kat, what do you like to do in your spare time? Um, well, sport is a big part of um, our sort of day-to-day -day life because um, my husband is a professional cage fighter, so that takes up a what? bit of our you time. Didn't tell us that last time. <laughs> wow. He's a professional cage fighter. <laughs> yeah. How do you fight a cage? <laughs> <laughs> It's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> I always somehow imagine that it happened on a cage that was sort of suspended above a baying crowd. Yeah. I think that wouldn't that be brilliant though if it were lowered in a, literally a cage. And you, I'm sure I've seen it in some sort of futuristic film. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. It's a cracking idea. We'll do it. We'll start it. We'll start that. We'll promote suspended it ourselves. Suspended cage fighting. Yes. I think Richard would beat you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not saying we're going to fight. I'm saying we're going to set tell it up you what, and promote there is it. There's only one way to find out, isn't there? Come on. I mean, this is kind of shaped a bit like... Come on, now. <laughs> oh, I'd love to... I don't to... know why you this know would what? help. After this many episodes, I would love to deck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would be consumed oh, with remorse. Just a... <laughs> oh, just see you flying back into that column. Red X comes up as you fly into it. Oh, a hundred. And then I come at you and then go, miss, and then trip over there. <laughs> Pointless. <laughs> I just... Yeah, 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 OK, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, lovely to have you back, Kat and Gemma. Very, very Thank best you. of luck. Let's hope we see you all the way through to the final, I think. Fingers this afternoon. crossed. <laughs> uh, next, we welcome Tim and Anna. Now, how do you two know each other? Um, I'm her stepdad. She's my favourite stepdaughter. Yeah. Your only stepdaughter. Step <laughs> but the favourite only <laughs> stepdaughter. <laughs> Very good indeed. Yes. Uh, where have you come from, Tim? Um, originally from London and now I'm in Milton Keynes. Yep, and I was in Milton Keynes and now I'm in London. Um, uh, Tim, what do you do? Um, I'm a currently unemployed IT manager. But what I'm trying to do at the moment, I'm trying to set up a business uh, baking cakes. <laughs> You've gone from IT um, to I cakes. To baking cakes, yes. yes you I'm see, that's pretty. It's a massive industry now. Cupcakes. No, oh, absolutely not. No, no not, not cup cupcakes. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Oversubscribe. I'm, uh, I'm trying to fill the niche of people who want cakes made in the shape of their pets. So I make dog cakes and things like that. Wow. Could you make me a fish cake? <laughs> Never heard that one before. Yeah. <laughs> well, very best of luck. So, how Thank far you have much. you got on setting up this business? How far have I got? Yeah. Um, I've got a couple of cake tins and, uh, <laughs> and an oven. And an oven and, and an a humongous bag of flour. But, uh, but I have the ambition. You have the ambition. Some more over world. And, and now you've just announced it to, to a peak time afternoon audience. Yes. And Fantastic. Think. Well, very, very best of luck. I have my business card that. up. Yes. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, now, Anna, yes. what do you do? Um, I work in recruitment for a fashion retail company. Very good indeed. Now, what would you like to come up this afternoon, Anna? Um, anything to do with fashion. That would be fantastic. Great. Um, celebrities and possibly film. But I know that makes me sound a little bit, I don't know, like I'm leaning on one side of things, but I'm hoping those come up. Well, very best of luck to the pair of you. Thank Great you. to have you here. And next, we welcome back Marco and Martin. You were also on the show last time. Yeah. Remind us what happened. Uh, we went out on that one due to the fact that Craig Bellamy is Welsh and not Irish, so I kind of blame him, really, a little bit for that. <laughs> yeah, no, entirely his fault. So, what are you hoping is going to come up this afternoon, Marco? Um, Welsh football is obviously a speciality of ours, but we'll go, I think we'll go back to films. We, we, we're OK in films. We were in a happy place then. You were good on films, first round. Yep, that was, a, that was a great round for you. Martin, anything else you'd like to throw uh, in? Possibly music. Um, I used to DJ part-time. Weddings, oh. birthdays, that kind of thing. So the cheesier, the better, really. Very you know, good. Dan dance floor. You say you used to. You've, yes, you've I haven't done it for a while now. No. Well, he's got a little bit more on his plate now. Yes, I have. Yeah, of course, yes. yes. You have twins. In fact, I both do. of you, you're both fathers of twins. Not with each other, obviously. No. <laughs> Although it looks like we're probably both expecting a couple more. Yes. <laughs> mine, mine are uh, almost a year. Mm. Mine are 14. Wow. Wow. So you, you forever handing out handy tips there, Marco? 
That, that's right, yeah. I think he's just about got the hang of it now. Well, listen, Marco and Martin, it's great having you back on the show. Very, very best of luck. Thank Let's you. hope we'll see you beyond the second round this time. And finally, we've got Min and Alison. Now, how do you two know each other? Uh, we met at school. Um, I'm not telling you how many years ago, but we've been friends ever since. So what do you do now, Alison? Uh, I'm in international marketing, market research. Um, and Min, what do you do? I'm a dog behaviourist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> There's cage fighters, there's people making cakes out of dogs. <laughs> this? I'm beginning to think this might be one big practical joke on you and yes, I. Yes, I think it probably is. Um, oh. What's that mean? It means if people have got barking or difficult dogs, they're having problems with the little doggy that perhaps it pulls a bit too much or meets and greets a bit too enthusiastically or <laughs> savages, you know, other little doggies. What it really wants is a cake. <laughs> uh, probably, yeah. I mean, I must, I must talk to Ooh, Tim right. later. But, uh, no, I go round and sort the doggies out for You're me. a dog whisperer? I'm a dog whisperer, yes. Very good indeed. Well, what would you like to come up this afternoon, Min? Serial killers, preferably. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, OK, serial killers. Anything else? <laughs> um, lemurs. Serial killers and lemurs. OK. Um, anything else, Alison, who would like to throw in the mix? Um, maybe Blackadder? I do have a dog called Baldrick, so a little bit of Blackadder wouldn't go amiss. Very good indeed. OK, well, let's hope it does. Very, very best of luck to the pair of you. Great to have you here. Thank you. We will find out more about all of you throughout the show as it goes on. There's only one person left for me to introduce. A man who lives at number one, Obscurity Avenue, Ringtop Bell. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. Oh, yeah. Afternoon. The top of the afternoon to you. What a great lineup of people. W what a Should lineup, an certainly. Absolute cracking show, shouldn't it? I don't believe a word of what I've heard up to now, but uh, <laughs> if half of it's true, it's spectacular, isn't it? Isn't it? We've got two returning pairs. Cat and Gemma made it all the way to the uh, the head to head last time, so. Uh, you would suspect they do well again, and uh, Marco and Martin got through it the second round as well. So it should be a very tough show for everybody, but a big jackpot should be an absolute cracker, I think. Here, here. Well, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. But what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time, so we had another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off, as Richard says, a massive figure of £10,250. <laughs> right, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points. So try and avoid those if you can. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Words. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in I-N-C-H as they could. I-N-C-H, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any word in the Oxford English Dictionary online edition that ends I-N-C-H. As always, no hyphenated words or proper nouns, places or people's names. We won't accept the word inch itself, I'm afraid. And in case of doubt, occasionally we might ask you to spell the answer that you've given. Very, very best of luck. OK, thank you very much indeed. Right, Kat and Gemma, you all drew lots before the show, and this afternoon you get to go first. Remember, we are looking for words ending in I-N-C-H. I'm going to have to try and go with something that I know is safe um, and hope that, that Kat's got a bit of time to think about it and think of an absolute belter, basically. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go with cinch. That's so weird. It's exactly what I was thinking of. Cinch. Let's see, you're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see if cinch is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said cinch. It's right. 34. Not bad. 34 for cinch. Richard? Uh, yeah, well played, Gemma. Something's a cinch. Simple, easy. It's a cinch. Very good. Tim? Um, I'll say bullfinch. 
Like the way you're thinking there, Tim. Bullfinch. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people send Bullfinch. Four. Very well done, Tim. That's a great answer. Four for Bullfinch, Richard. Yeah, terrific answer, Tim. Very well done. Great start. Bullfinch. Thank you. It's a bullfinch. <laughs> no one knows why they're called bullfinches. They've got quite a thick neck, but apart from that, nobody knows. <laughs> Martin. I'm going to stay in a similar area and go with Chaffinch. I see quite a lot of birds coming up, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> Chaffinch, says Martin. Let's see if that's right. You hope to score as few points as possible. How many people said Chaffinch? He's right. Twenty. Twenty for Chaffinch. Yeah, pretty good answer. Martin Chaffinch, obviously another very popular British bird. That gets its name for eating chaff, because often you often find them in barns, chaffinches. Alison. I think I'm going to stick with the bird theme, and I'll go with Hawfinch. 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 Right, OK, well, let's see. You're hoping to score as few points as possible, Alison. This could be a spectacular answer. You're saying Hawfinch. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Hawfinch. Very well done. It's right. And it's pointless. That's an excellent answer. Very well done, Alison. It adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £10,500, and it scores you nothing. That's a great answer, Alison. Very well done. Richard? Yeah, brilliant answer, Alison. Very well played. If you ask a cockney what a hawfinch is, he'll say, it's about that. <laughs> now then, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Alison and Min, you are on nothing. Fantastic score. Tim, who introduced us to this bird line. <laughs> Well done, <laughs> thank you. Uh, you scored four for that, a great score. Then we go up to 20, where we find Martin and Marco. Then up to 34, where we find Gemma and Kat. So, Kat, we need an absolutely genius answer from you on the next pass. We're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, so remember, we are looking for words ending in I-N-C-H. Min, the high score is a Kat and Gemma on 34. If you can score 33 or less, you are through to the next round. Well, given that Alison was so brilliant, I think I've got the um, leeway to play it quite safe. Um, so I'm going to say winch. Uh, there is a red line. Below that red line, through to the next round. Let's see if winch is right and how many people said it. It's right. 44. 44 for winch, Min. That takes your total up to 44. Yeah, not a bad tactic, Min, but probably a few more points than you would have liked a uh, winch, any sort of pulley that uh, hoists things up. A winch. A winch. Marco, we come to you. The high scorers are now Min and Alison on 44. You're on 20. If you can score 23 or less, you are through to the next round. I'm going to stay on the bird theme and I'm going to go with goldfinch. Goldfinch, says Marco. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Goldfinch. That's right. Very well done indeed. Three! That scores you very well said, Marco. Takes your total up to 23. You are through to the next round. Yeah, well played, Marco. Absolutely. Uh, everyone's going for very similar answers, but they all seem to be working. It's a James Bond film where one of the villains uh, looks after Goldfinches. <laughs> He's a, he's, a, he's a goldfincher. <laughs> it's not Good. easy, you know, this. No, it's not, it's not. Now then, Anna, you're on four. The high scorers are Min and Alison on 44. If you can score 39 or less, you are through to the next round. OK. Um, pretty much all of the answers I've thought of um, have already come up. I don't know that many birds, though, so how many people have said birds I've never even heard of? It's fantastic. <laughs> um, pretty much the only word I can think of now is clinch, as in clinching a deal. There's yeah. your red line. Now then, Anna, if your clinch can get you below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said clinch. It's right. And you've done it. 
Very well done. 20 for Clinch. 20 for Clinch takes your total up to 24. You are through to the next round. Richard. Yeah, very well played, Anna. Clinch. It's an English word that ends I and C H. <laughs> Clinch. Cat. You're on 34. The high score is on 44. Are Min and Alison. Listen, if you can score nine or less, you are through to the next round. Nine or less. Um, well, my bird knowledge is pretty non-existent, so I'm going to have to just cut that um, option off. And uh, clinch was one of my options. So the only other word that I can think of um, was actually a film, The Grinch, with Jim Carrey. So I'm assuming Grinch is a a word if it's not then I can't think of anything else so I'm just gonna have to go with Grinch and hope that nobody else thought of it there's your red line if you get below that red line with Grinch you are through to the next round let's see if it's right and if it is let's see how many people said Grinch very best of luck oh, it's right That was a great answer. Grinch scored you 19, takes your total up to 53, Richard. Yeah, a valiant effort. Uh, a spoil sport or a killjoy, really, and famous in The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. It's a very good answer, but uh, sadly not quite low enough. Uh, there are a few more birds out there. This finch itself, obviously, would have been a big scorer. A uh, green finch, you could have said, that would have scored three points. There's another couple of finches on this pointless answers list as well. There's the hawfinch that we have from Alison, which is a brilliant answer. The pie finch, which is a sort of a regional word for chaffinch. Actually, that would have been pointless. The rose finch, that was pointless. Squinch, that's a pointless answer. It means to sit closely or squeeze together. Skinch, to restrict the supply of something. Swinch, to, uh, to toil or labour. To pinch, which literally means to pinch. It comes from Shakespeare's Merry Wise of Windsor. Unclinch, different way of saying unclench. And rinch, which also uh, is a variant spelling of rinse. Let's take a look at the ones that the most of our 100 people said. Winch, actually the third biggest of all, but saw you through to the next round, so good answer, 44. Finch itself would have scored you 64. And Ryan at the top, Pinch, on 82. Thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid it's Kath and Gemma. Oh, dear, at 53, not a bad score at all, and yet here it is, yeah. the high score at the end of the round. And you were, you were through to the head-to-head -head in the last show, yeah. and very nearly through to the final. Yeah. You win some, you lose some, you know, but taking part, I suppose, is... Well, actually, no. no. We wanted to win. <laughs> no, 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 it's very it's bitterly disappointing, but uh, yeah, yeah, disappointing for us. We have to say goodbye to you. Great shame. You've been fantastic contestants. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one of the teams in front of me now will be leaving us at the end of this round. Our round two category this afternoon is... Television. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, so our round two question this afternoon concerns... TV detectives and their shows. TV detectives and their shows. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you a list of six TV detectives on each pass. We asked 100 people in which TV series did these detectives first appear in. If you give us a nice obscure answer, you're going to score fewer points, but give us an incorrect answer, you're going to score 100 points. It's going to be 12 detectives in all, 12 series to guess at home. OK, thank you very much. We are looking for the TV shows in which these detectives first appeared, and we have got... DS James Hathaway. D.I. Jack Regan, D.I. Peter Carlyle, D.I. Burnside, D.C.I. David Bilborough, and D.I. Sam Tyler. I'll read those all one more time. D.S. James Hathaway, D.I. Jack Regan, D.I. Peter Carlyle, D.I. Burnside, D.C.I. David Bilborough, and D.I. Sam Tyler. Now, there we are. Anna. <laughs> This is not going to go well. Um, I literally know nothing about detective shows, despite my grand being an avid watcher. I should probably have watched some with her sometime, so I'm going to get this completely wrong. I don't know a single one on the board. <laughs> um, I'm going to go... D.I. Burnside and Midsummer Murders. It's the only detective show I can think of. Midsummer Murders, you're saying for D.I. Burnside. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Good luck. No! Bad luck. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, and I'm sorry. That scores you the maximum of 100 points. Richard. 
Yeah, sorry, Anna, your grandmother will be screaming at the television <laughs> as we speak. Uh, I won't give the correct answer just in case Martin or Alison want to have a go at the same one. OK, now, Martin. Martin, is this a good topic for you? It's better. I know these. <laughs> at least one of these. So I am going to go for the bottom one, D.I. Sam Tyler, and that's Life on Mars. Life on Mars for Sam Tyler, you're saying. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. He's right. <laughs> Fifteen. Well played, Martin. 15 for Life on Mars, Richard. Uh, yeah, good answer, Martin. John Sim, of course, plays DCI Sam Tyler, and Philip Glenister as, uh, as Gene Hunt. Sort of time travel cop series. Very, very good indeed. Now, Alison, you're the last person to have this board. Mm. So you can go through the board and supply all the answers, if you like, uh, and then submit <laughs> one at the end. Unfortunately, I can do absolutely nothing of the sort. Um, I know I know James Hathaway, and when you tell me I shall know the answer, and the same with Jack Reagan. But I have not a clue. I, and I know James Hathaway. I think he's in Oxford, and he's been on recently, and he's in a second series. I can't remember the name of the series. Um, I'm going I'm to go for James Hathaway, Midsummer Murders, and I know it's wrong. It's the other one. But James Hathaway, Midsummer Murders, you're saying. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. James Hathaway, Midsummer Murders. No! Bad luck, Alice. I'm afraid another incorrect I'm answer. Sorry, which means you also scored the maximum of 100 points. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Alison. Now Anna's gran is screaming at you through the yes. TV set. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you're absolutely thinking you're on the right lines. It is in Oxford. He is the psychic to Lewis. Lewis, it. played by Lawrence Fox, would have scored you 13 points. D.I. Burnside, played by Christopher Ellison, first appeared on the bill, would have scored you 53 points. Jack Regan was uh, John Thor's character in The Sweeney. Would have scored you 28. DCI David Bilbra was Christopher Eccleston's character in Cracker. Would have scored you one point, so a very good answer. And DI Peter Carlyle is a pointless answer. He was played by David Tennant in the cop musical Blackpool. <laughs> very well done if you got that pointless answer. OK, we're halfway through the rounds. So let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Martin and Marco looking extremely strong there on 15. And then Anna and Tim and Alison and Min on 100. So, yes, it's going to be between you, Min and Tim to tussle it out, see who will be leaving us at the end of this round. Very best of luck. We're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put six more detectives on the board, and here they are. We have got... DCI Jane Tennyson, DC David Briggs, DCI Tom Barnaby, Inspector James Jap, DI Maggie Forbes, and Superintendent Stanley Mullet. I shall read those all one more time. DCI Jane Tennyson, DC David Briggs, DCI Tom Barnaby, Inspector James Jap, DI Maggie Forbes, and Superintendent Stanley Mullet. Now remember, we are looking for the TV shows in which these detectives appear, and obviously you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Min, your joint high scorers. Is this board going to help you? I think... I hope so. I think... D.I. Maggie Forbes was in The Gentle Touch. D.I. Maggie Forbes, The Gentle Touch, says Min. How many people said The Gentle Touch? It's right, Min. That's a brilliant answer. Whoa, very well done indeed. Look at that, nine. Nine for the gentle touch takes your total up to 109. Richard. Yeah, well played, Min. Got yourself right back into the game. Played by Jill Gascoigne, uh, of course, then went on to be in Cat's Eyes as well, but gentle touch first. Now then, Marco, our high scorers on 109 are Min and Alison. You're on 15. If you can score 93 or less, you are straight through to the head-to-head. -head. How simple could it be? Indeed. <laughs> Don't recognise any of them, definitely. So now I'm starting to really struggle, and it's a guess from the back of my mind somewhere. I'm going to go for Superintendent Stanley Mullet and I'm going to go for Z Cars. Superintendent Stanley Mullet, Z Cars. Marco, there's your lovely high red line. Look at that. 
It's a walk in the park, just down from the pink line down to the red line. Do you think Stanley Mullet and Zed cars are going to get you there? Absolutely not. <laughs> what do you think, Martin? No. <laughs> Don't know or no? No. <laughs> but I, I, could, I could be mistaken, however... No. No. <laughs> Superintendent Stanley Mullet, is it right for Zed cars? Let's see if it is. How many people said it? No! Bad luck, Marco. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which takes your total up to 115. Ooh, it's all getting very close indeed as we come to the end of this second round. Richard. Yeah, sorry, Marco. Tough round. Uh, I won't give you the answer just in case Tim wants to have a go at the same one. <laughs> Ooh. So then, Tim, it's all in your hands. Right. The scores are ranged. 115, Marco and Martin. 109, Min and Alison, and you on 100. You have to score 14 or less to stay in the game. 14 or less. How much do you know about TV cop shows? Um... Not a lot. Less than Anna did. <laughs> right. Um, luckily, however, there was one that I've got half of a brain cell in the back of the mind going, and luckily none of the other guys have had a go yet. So I'm going to say DCI Jane Tennyson, was she in Prime Suspect? OK, you're saying Jane Tennyson, Prime Suspect. Yes. That has to score you 14 or less, or we say goodbye to you. Very best of luck, Tim. Let's see if prime suspect Jane Tennyson is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's going to be very, very close, I think. Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh. You needed to score 14. You scored 16. Oh, Tim, look at that. Oh, that's very exciting indeed, but I'm afraid you are the high scorers. Richard. Tim, that's really, really unlucky. Uh, great answer. Just didn't quite score you uh, mm. few enough. Let's fill in the rest of the board. We can actually, the first thing we could do is finally solve the mystery of Midsummer Murders because the real uh, original cop from that is up there. DCI Tom Barnaby, played by John Nettles, uh, would have scored you 49 points. Superintendent Stanley Mullet, not from Zed Cars, is actually Frost's boss in A Touch of Frost, would have scored you 12 points. Inspector James Jap. He was uh, the perennially put-upon inspector in the Poirot stories. Would have scored you 17. And DC David Briggs is a pointless answer. That was from the spoof series Detectives. Uh, he was played by Robert Powell in that, alongside Jasper Carrot. No points at all. Very well done if you said that at home. Very well done if you got all 12 of those. Uh, very tough round, I think. Very tough indeed. Well, thanks very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, Tim and Anna. Oh, what a shame. Well... You, you saved everyone in the first round, oh, Tim. <laughs> but for your Finch tip, I think we would have seen some very, very high scores in that first mm. round. Uh, so that was, uh, that was a very selfless act. Thank you. Um, it happens. Now, it's not entirely selfless, of course, because you picked it yourself yeah. first. But um, a, a great first round. Uh, we will just have to look forward to seeing you again next time and uh, hope we'll see much more of you. But Tim and Anna, great contestants. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Now, very well done, Marco and Martin, Min and Alison. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for that jackpot, which currently stands at a massive £10,500. <laughs> <laughs> now, for each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair and you will win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Christina Aguilera UK Top 40 singles as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any single released by Christina Aguilera or which has her as a named featured artist that has reached the UK Top 40 prior to May 2011, please. A lot of answers on this list and a lot of big scores as well. 14 top 10 hits on this list. Wow. OK, well, thank you very much, Richard. Marco and Martin, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Christina Aguilera, Top 40 singles. Dirty, Dirty was one of hers. The only one I think I know. Do you know any? Yeah, yeah. OK, we're going to go for Lady Marmalade. Lady Marmalade. Very good. Lady Marmalade has gone. Min and Alison. Uh, well, we've got a total of... Well, we're sorting through 
one, one between us. One between us. So we're going to say that one. And I hope it's the right one. And it's called Dirty. Dirty. OK, we have Lady Marmalade and we have Dirty. Marco and Martin, Lady Marmalade, is it right how many people said it? It's right. It's a good score. Look at that. Eleven. Eleven for Lady Marmalade. Min and Alison, you've gone for dirty. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said dirty. It's right. Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Right. Well, that means after one question, Marco and Martin are ahead 1-0. Richard? Yeah, two correct answers, but Marco and Martin, that's a good one. She had a number one hit with Lady Marmalade alongside uh, Maya and Lil' Kim and Pink as well. It's three pointless answers up here, all top ten hits, but all collaborations with other artists. There was Tilt Your Head Back, which she did with Nelly. Tell Me, she did that with P. Diddy and Nobody Wants To Be Lonely with Ricky Martin. Keeps Getting Better would have scored you one. Come on over, baby, all I want is you would have scored one. Not Myself Tonight, three. Uh, Ain't No Other Man would have scored you five. The Voice Within, five. Hurt, seven. Car Wash, seven. Can't Hold Us Down, eight. What A Girl Wants, ten. I Turn To You, eleven. And the big score is here. There's Lady Marmalade, eleven. Candyman, fourteen. Fighter on twenty. Beautiful, forty-nine. Genie in a Bottle, fifty-two. And Dirty with Red Man on fifty-four. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Now, Min and Alison, you have to win this one. Stay in the game. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Ricky Gervais films as they could. Ricky Gervais films. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any feature film made for general cinema release for which Ricky Gervais has received an acting credit prior to May 2011, please. No short films, TV films or documentaries, but voice performances do count. OK, thank you very much. Now then, Min and Alison, you go first this time. Any idea? Any Ricky Gervais film? Um, we've really got no idea. Um, I think he might have been in that Russell Brand film, but I'm not sure of the name of it. I think it's called something like Show Me the Way to the Greek. Show Me the Way to the Greek. OK, I'll take that as your answer. Marco and Martin. Uh, the the Museum, one and one two. One two. Uh, the Invention of Lying. But I think the Star one... Stardust as well. Stardust as well. Yeah. I think the one we're going to go for when you played a dentist who could see the dead, uh, Ghost Town. Ghost Town. So, we have Show Me the Way to the Greek and we have Ghost Town. In the order they were given, Show Me the Way to the Greek, is it right how many people said it? Bad luck, Min and Alison, I'm afraid. An incorrect answer, which means, Marco and Martin, you merely have to be correct and you are straight through I'll to the final. I've not seen the film. <laughs> Do you think that's the right name? I think it is now, yeah. I'm doubting myself a little bit, but I'm going to stick with it. OK, well, let's find out. Ghost Town, is it right? That's all it needs to be. It is right. Very well done. Oh, it's a great answer. Look at that. Oh, 11. Very well done indeed, Marco and Martin. Very well done. That means after only two questions, you are through to the final in straight sets. 2 0. Richard. Yeah, well played, Marco Martin. Good answer. Uh, yeah, it's called Get Him to the Greek, is the name of the Russell Brand film. And Ricky Gervais is not in it, I'm afraid. But do you know who is in it? Christina Aguilera plays herself in that film. My nemesis. Uh, yeah, your nemesis. Yeah, you never knew Christina Aguilera was your nemesis, did you? I didn't. Until now. Quite a good nemesis to have. Let's take a look at all the answers up here. For your consideration, the, uh, the Christopher Guest film, he was in that Dog Eat Dog, that was a very early thing, just played a bouncer in that in 2001. Valiant, he was a voice of Bugsy in the, uh, that animation, would have scored you three points. Stardust, the fantasy adventure, would have scored you five. He wrote with Stephen Merchant and starred in Cemetery Junction, would have scored you six. There's Night at the Museum, Battle of the Smithsonian, that was the sequel, would have scored nine. There's Ghost Town 11, The Invention of Lying on 14, alongside the original Night at the Museum. Very well done if you got uh, either of those pointless answers. Thank you very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Min and Alison. Dear, that was a very tough, tough head-to-head -head for you, wasn't it? it just, just the way the subjects come up. Just, it is, exactly, yes, unfortunate. Did you know some of those Ricky Gervais films when they came up? No. I knew Night at the Museum, and, but I didn't know he was in it, which sort of yeah. made it... Yeah, it sort of makes it somehow easier, doesn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, 
I'm afraid this is where we have to say goodbye to you. I mean, you've been fantastic, Contessa. You've played excellently throughout the show so far. We will have to look forward to seeing you again next time, when maybe you'll make it even further. But meanwhile, Min and Alison, thank you very much. <laughs> but for Marco and Martin, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win that jackpot of £10,500. Well, congratulations, Marco and Martin. You fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, you may have noticed the jackpot stands at £10,500. <laughs> Now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we've had one pointless answer on the show today. You only have to find one more, and you'll leave here with that money. First, though, you've got to pick a category, and you can choose from these three options. They are American actors, golf, <laughs> soul divas. Oh, no. American actors, <laughs> golf, Soul Divas. Right, Soul Divas, I think, we same say, is out. Should we stick to what we know? American actors. American actors. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll stay with what's got us here. We're going to go with American actors. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Ben Affleck films as they could. Ben Affleck films. Richard. Yes, yeah, straight into another film question, guys. We're looking for any feature film made for cinema release for which Ben Affleck has received an acting credit prior to April 2011. No short films, TV films or documentaries, but voice performances do count. Very, very best of luck. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £10,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. OK, boy, I've got uh, Dogma. Yeah. Dogma is in. Uh, think of anything with Matt Damon in. I was trying to think. I really confused the two. Um, um, Daredevil was Ben Affleck. Daredevil was Ben Affleck, but he's probably going to be well known. Was uh, Good Will Hunting was Matt Damon. Yeah. Did Ben Affleck appear in that at all? Don't know. Um, uh, what else? It, um, it was with J Lo as well. What was that absolutely rubbish oh, film? Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Not, was it Made in Manhattan? Not Made in Manhattan. Come on. Uh, what was it called? I don't know you think it. Well, go on. You think on that one. Oh, okay. Well, you come up with something else in the meantime then. Anything with Ben Affleck? Daredevil. Would he be credited for Team America? He wouldn't be, because he's a puppet, but... But who did voice for him? Exactly. I don't know. I don't think I don't know. It might be worth yeah. a, sh a shout if there were anything else. I'd like to say Daredevil won't, won't no, be no, worth it. Dogma so, Dogma. Yeah. Should we go for Team America? Yeah. And then, uh, well, I've got Goodwill Hunting. Unless yeah. you've got something else. Can you try and think of that other one? Five seconds left. I'll keep thinking. Oh, yeah. It's worth a shout. OK, there is your minute up. We were looking for Ben Affleck films. I now need three answers from you. Gonna go for Dogma, yeah? Yeah. Dogma? Dogma. Team America? Yeah. Team America World Team Police. America. And Jiggly, which is just plucked out, which is as good as any of yeah. Jiggly. Jiggly. God of those God. three, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless Dogma. answer? Dogma because it was the other one for sure, isn't it? <laughs> Dogma. Dogma. We will put Dogma last. What is your least likely pointless answer? It's jiggly, because I may have made it up. <laughs> <laughs> jiggly. Because yeah. you may have made it up. Let's put them up on the board in that order. And here they are. Jiggly, Team America and Dogma. Three good answers. It's OK, we were looking for Ben Affleck films. You said this was your least confident shot at that pointless answer. Jiggly. Now, remember, you only have to find one pointless answer and you will win that £10,500 jackpot. To get the ball rolling, let's see if Jiggly is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Jiggly. This for £10,500. It's right. It's right. You weren't sure if you'd made it up? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out you didn't. It exists. Ben Affleck's in it now. It's right. The next thing has to be is pointless. It goes down into single figures. Down it goes. Oh, four. Four. OK. <laughs> well done, mate. Good answer. Well, unfortunately, not a pointless answer, but, oh, it's a good score. OK, you only have two more chances to win today's jackpot, £10,500. What would you do with £10,500? Go on holiday, Ali. Yeah, we, we, we talked about it. If we won the money together, then we'd take our families together oh. a group holiday away. Fantastic. Well, let's hope, fingers tightly crossed, that one of these two remaining answers will get you on that holiday. OK, your next answer is Team America. This has to be right. Mm -hmm. 
And it has to be pointless. You're not sure if it isn't somebody impersonating yes, him yes, in exactly. America. Okay, let's see. This has to be right. And if it is, it has to be pointless. And if it's both of those things, you will win £10,500. Let's see. Team America. Is Ben Affleck in it? And how many people said it? Team America. Very best of luck, guys. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. We weren't sure about that one anyway. That was just holding the place. You only have one more chance to win today's jackpot, but luckily it's on Dogma, which you had no hesitation in putting forward as your most confident shot at the pointless answer. Okay. Dogma has to be right, and it has to be pointless. If it's both of those things, you walk away here right now with £10,500 in your back pocket. Okay. Dogma, is it right? How many people said it? Very best of luck, guys. Dogma. It's right. It's right. Now, if this goes all the way down to zero, you leave here with £10,500. Down into the teens, down into single figures. Will this go down to zero? Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Only three people had dogma, but that's three too many, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that vital pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £10,500. But you have been fantastic contestants, absolutely brilliant, and you do, of course, get to take home our pointless trophy, exactly. so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unlucky guys, uh, three good answers. Uh, yeah, the Team America World Police, it's, uh, it's an impersonation of him. There's actually a love song in Team America World Police with the lyrics, uh, I need you like Ben Affleck needs acting school. <laughs> Although he's actually rather good in some of these, uh, some of these pointless answers. I suspect you'll recognise a few of them as well. The Town, he directed and starred in recently. He's very good in that. Chasing Amy, which was a, a Kevin Thank Smith you. film. That was a pointless answer. Kevin Smith, who obviously uh, directed Dogma as well. Forces of Nature with Sandra Bullock. That was a pointless answer. Changing Lanes with Samuel L. Jackson. That was pointless. More Rats, another Kevin Smith film. Pointless answer. Hollywood Land, he won a Best Actor at the Venice Film Festival for that. One more board, Smoke and Aces, State of Play, the remake of the, the British TV series, and Clerks 2, yet another Kevin Smith film. Unlucky three, very good answers, and you've played so well throughout both shows. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Marco and Martin, but it's been just brilliant having you on the show. You've been fantastic contestants. Thank you both so much for playing. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>